Ever thought about where that golden honey comes from? That sweet, sticky stuff you love to drizzle on your morning toast or stir into your tea? It's a journey into the fascinating world of bee farming. Millions of pounds of honey are produced every year. A symphony of nature and human ingenuity. Honey, a natural marvel, a gift from the hive, thanks to the humble honeybee. Transforming nectar into the golden elixir we all enjoy. Discover the secrets of American bee farming. The story of liquid gold starts right here. But hold your horses folks because the story of bees is about so much more than just honey. Not by a long shot. That delicious sweet stuff is merely one part of their incredibly important job description. These tiny buzzing creatures play an absolutely massive, almost unbelievable role in our world. They are, without a doubt, the unsung heroes of agriculture. I'm not exaggerating here. Without our friend the honeybee and other pollinators, our dinner plates would look drastically different and not in a good way. They are nature's master pollinators, the critical link in the chain that brings so much food to our tables. Think about that for a moment. Tiny insects orchestrating a huge part of our food supply. Let's talk about the numbers for a second because they are truly staggering and paint a vivid picture. Bee pollination is directly responsible for billions, yes billions with a B, of dollars in agricultural value in the United States alone each year. Crops like almonds, apples, avocados, blueberries, cherries, and cucumbers, the list just goes on and on. So many of the fruits, vegetables, and nuts that form a healthy diet rely heavily on these industrious little workers. Commercial farmers actually contract with beekeepers, paying them to bring thousands of hives to their fields precisely when the crops are in bloom. It's a vital symbiotic partnership, essential for a successful harvest and for feeding the nation. This isn't just a casual side gig for bees, it's a critical mission. Think of these bees as the ultimate dirty job specialists of the insect kingdom. They don't punch a clock, they don't ask for overtime, and they certainly don't complain. They just get the vital job done, day after day. Imagine them, flying from flower to flower, getting absolutely covered in golden pollen, performing an intricate dance that ensures the future of that plant. It's hard, relentless, and often dangerous work, but it benefits every single one of us. Modern agriculture with its vast monoculture fields, huge areas planted with a single crop, depends more heavily than ever on managed bee colonies. These little pollinators are the key to ensuring that plants set fruit and produce the yields we need. So, how do American farmers manage to harness this incredible natural power so effectively? How do they skillfully oversee these buzzing workforces, not only for honey production but also for crucial pollination services? It's a very delicate balancing act, let me tell you. It requires deep knowledge, generations of experience, and increasingly, a healthy dose of cutting-edge technology. This is where that Optitech angle really comes into play, showcasing how innovation is boosting this ancient practice. Let's talk about the sweet science behind honey, folks. Bees transform simple nectar into golden honey. This liquid gold is packed with goodness. It's a testament to nature's efficiency. Each drop is a tiny miracle. Appreciate the incredible value of honey. Protecting bees is more important than ever. Every spoonful represents countless bee hours. Next time you drizzle honey, take a moment. Honey's not just for your morning toast. This golden liquid is a genuine powerhouse, revered for its healing properties. Modern science confirms its antibacterial qualities. It's nature's original superfood. Honey production is a big business, supporting local economies and jobs. It's versatile, found in cosmetics, food, and more. Buying real honey supports bees and beekeepers. Enjoy nature's best work, one golden spoonful at a time. Bee farming isn't just about honey, it's vital for agriculture, providing essential pollination. Healthy bees mean a healthy environment. Beekeepers are stewards of both bees and the land. Supporting bee farming supports our planet's future. It's a sweet responsibility. And that, my friends, is something truly worth buzzing about with enthusiasm. Now we've talked about the bees, the honey, and their massive job. But how are modern U.S. farmers keeping up, especially with all the new challenges popping up? We're in the 21st century, folks, and technology is buzzing its way right into the apiary. These challenges are exactly why the industry is embracing some seriously cool tech. This isn't about replacing the beekeeper's skill, it's about giving them supercharged tools to do their vital work even better. It's the Optitech way optimizing nature with ingenuity. Smart hives mean healthier, less stressed bees, more efficient management, and ultimately more of that golden honey. It's a win-win. Smart hives collect data like temperature and humidity. Specialized software organizes this data into useful insights. 
AI and machine learning find patterns in complex data. Drones assist in hive inspections and site assessments. This tech boosts efficiency and supports healthier bees. Technology is revolutionizing beekeeping. From smart hives and traps to genetic tools and automated feeders, innovations are tackling threats like varroa mites and improving bee health and productivity. Think making honey is just setting up a box? Think again. Being a successful bee farmer is a year-round commitment. It's a constant vigil, a dedicated partnership with these amazing insects. Beekeepers are bee stewards, in tune with the hive and seasons. Understanding the honeybee colony's life cycle is paramount. It's a demanding job requiring patience and respect. It's more of a calling, a way of life. The action kicks off in spring. The colony stirs and grows, and the beekeeper's first job is a spring checkup. Ensuring the queen bee is healthy and laying eggs is crucial. A productive queen is the heart of the colony. If she's weak or missing, the beekeeper must act fast. Assessing the colony's food stores is essential. Sometimes, supplemental feeding is needed. As the colony expands, they need more room. Adding supers prevents them from running out of space and swarming. Summertime is peak season, with major nectar flows. Bees work overtime hauling in nectar, flowers bloom everywhere, and bees are busy. The beekeeper monitors this intense activity. Are the bees bringing in plenty of nectar? Do they have enough empty comb to store honey? Stay ahead of them to keep honey production up. It's prime time for watching out for pests and diseases. Varroa mites love to multiply in a booming colony. Regular checks and treatments keep bees healthy. As summer fades into autumn the pace changes. Bees prepare for colder months ahead. It's harvest time for surplus honey. But they never take it all. Ensure the colony has enough honey for winter. After harvest it's about battening down the hatches. Reduce hive entrances and wrap hives with insulation. It's a cycle of care, ensuring bees are ready for next spring. All right, so the bees have done their incredible work, the supers are heavy, and the air around the apiary is thick with the sweet scent of success. Now comes the really exciting part for the beekeeper, the golden harvest. But how do they know exactly when it's time to pull the honey? Well, the bees themselves give the signal. They cap the honeycomb cells with a thin layer of fresh white beeswax once the honey inside has ripened to perfection, meaning its water content is just right. A beekeeper will look for frames that are mostly capped. Then it's go time. Out come the tools of the trade, the trusty smoker to calm the bees, a hive tool to gently pry apart the sticky hive boxes, and a bee brush or a special bee blower to gently usher the bees off the frames. Beekeepers, usually clad in full protective gear, work efficiently to remove the frames, often one super at a time. Once the honey supers are safely inside the extraction facility, the next step is uncapping. Some beekeepers use a special hot knife, electrically heated to slice through the capping smoothly. Others prefer a cold serrated knife or an uncapping scratcher, which looks a bit like a comb. Whichever method is used, the sight of that pristine honeycomb, freshly uncapped and glistening with honey, and the incredible aroma that fills the air, it's an experience that never gets old for a beekeeper. With the frames uncapped, it's time for the main event, spinning out the honey. This is done using a honey extractor, which is basically a big drum, often made of stainless steel, that uses centrifugal force. Section 3, from comb to consumer, the final polish. Okay, the honey has been spun out of the combs, but it's not quite ready for your toast just yet, folks. Straight from the extractor, the honey will have bits of beeswax, maybe a few stray bee parts, it happens, and other tiny debris in it. So the first step in processing is straining. The honey is typically allowed to flow through a series of filters or screens, starting with coarser ones to catch the bigger bits, and then progressively finer ones. Many beekeepers, especially those selling raw honey, will only use a relatively coarse strain to ensure all the beneficial pollen grains remain. After straining, the honey is often left to sit in large tanks for a while. This is called settling, and it allows tiny air bubbles and any remaining superfine particles to naturally rise to the top, leaving behind beautifully clear honey. Once the honey is strained, settled, and maybe gently warmed, it's time for bottling and packaging. This is where the honey gets its Sunday best, ready to meet the consumer. You'll see honey in all sorts of containers, classic glass jars that show off its beautiful color, convenient plastic squeeze bottles, even charming little honey bears. The bottling process itself can range from simple hand pouring for small-scale producers to highly automated bottling lines and larger operations that fill thousands of jars an hour. Finally, with the honey all bottled up and looking good, it's time for quality control and hitting the market. Section 1, Nature's Hurdles, Bees Against the Elements, and Us. 
Now being a bee farmer in the good old USA sounds like a sweet gig, right? And it is, most of the time, but let me tell you, it ain't all sunshine and clover honey. These hardworking folks, and their billions of buzzing employees face some serious hurdles. Think about it. They're dealing with mother nature in all her glory, and sometimes her fury. Then you've got the not-so-natural challenges, things we humans have thrown into the mix. It's a constant battle to keep those hives healthy and the honey flowing, one of the biggest worries keeping beekeepers up at night? Pesticides. Yeah, those chemicals designed to protect our crops can be a real double-edged sword for our pollinating pals. We're talking about things like neonicotinoids, a mouthful of a word for a real nasty problem for bees. Even if the bees aren't the direct target, these substances can drift through the air or get into the pollen and nectar. Imagine you're a tiny bee, just trying to do your job, and you accidentally bring home a toxic lunch to your family. Section 2. The Microscopic Menace Pests, Diseases, and Bee Blues Alright, so we've talked about the big, visible challenges like weather and finding enough flowers, but some of the biggest enemies our honeybees face are tiny, almost invisible. I'm talking about pests and diseases, the kind of microscopic menaces that can wreak havoc inside a beehive. And public enemy number one, the one that gives beekeepers nightmares? That'd be the Varroa mite. This little critter, no bigger than a pinhead, is a parasitic vampire that latches onto bees, especially the developing young ones, and sucks their blood or hemolymph, as the scientists call it. It's like something out of a horror movie, but for bees, it's a terrifying reality. These mites are a relentless plague across the globe. Now what makes these Varroa mites so darn destructive? Well first off, they weaken the bees directly by feeding on them. Think about having a constant leech attached to you. You wouldn't be feeling too energetic, would you? But it gets worse. These mites are also fantastic vectors for spreading all sorts of nasty viruses. So, keeping bees healthy and productive in the face of all these environmental and biological challenges is a tall order. But there's another side to this coin, folks, the economic side. Let's be honest, bee farming isn't just a charming hobby for these folks, it's a business, it's their livelihood, and like any farming operation, they face economic pressures that can make things pretty tough. The price of honey can fluctuate wildly, influenced by global markets and unfortunately sometimes by cheaper imported honey that might not always be the real deal. Add to that the rising costs of everything, fuel for their trucks, new equipment, sugar for supplemental feeding if needed, and all those mite treatments. It all adds up, squeezing those profit margins. Think about the investment needed just to keep those bees buzzing. Those treatments for varroa mites and other diseases, they cost money, and they take time to apply. If a colony gets wiped out by disease or a sudden cold snap, replacing it isn't cheap. And all that cool technology we talked about, the smart hives, the monitoring software, the drones, while they can massively boost efficiency and bee health in the long run, they often require a significant upfront investment. All right, folks, let's talk numbers. Big numbers. American bee farmers produced a whopping 126 million pounds of honey in a year. That's enough to fill a fleet of tanker trucks. North Dakota, California, and other states are honey powerhouses. Each state's unique flowers give their honey distinct flavors. It's a testament to the incredible hard work of our beekeepers and their buzzing partners. Now let's look at the bigger picture, the ebb and flow of this golden tide. U.S. honey production numbers, while impressive, haven't always been on a steady climb. They can bounce around a bit from year to year. Why's that, you ask? Well, remember all those challenges we talked about? Pesky varroa mites, unpredictable weather patterns, and changes in land use can all throw a wrench in the works. Some years are fantastic with nectar flowing like there's no tomorrow. Other years, beekeepers really have to buckle down and work extra hard just to get a decent crop. It's the nature of farming, even bee farming. But despite these ups and downs, the dedication to producing high-quality American honey remains incredibly strong. And this isn't just about a tasty treat, folks. This industry has some serious economic muscle. That 126 million pounds of honey we talked about? In 2023, it was valued at a cool $274 million. That's a significant chunk of change, directly supporting thousands of American families and contributing to rural economies across the nation. This value represents the honey sold by beekeepers with five or more colonies, so the actual impact is even larger when you consider smaller producers and all the related industries. From hive manufacturers to equipment suppliers, the ripple effect is substantial. It's clear that these tiny bees are making a big economic buzz, contributing far more than just sweetness to our lives. Here's an interesting tidbit for you. As much honey as we produce, we Americans sure do love the stuff. So much so that we actually import quite a bit of honey from other countries to meet our national sweet tooth. 
The U.S. is one of the world's biggest honey consumers, and while our beekeepers work incredibly hard, demand often outstrips domestic supply. Countries like Vietnam, India, Argentina, and Brazil are major suppliers to the U.S. market. We do export some of our amazing specialty American honeys too, but overall we bring in more than we send out. This global trade keeps the honey flowing, but it also highlights the importance of supporting our own local beekeepers and their fantastic homegrown products whenever we can. So, what does this all mean for you, the honey lover? Well, it means you've got choices. American consumers are getting more and more savvy about their honey. There's a growing demand for local, raw, and unfiltered varieties. People want to know where their food comes from, and honey is no exception. This trend is fantastic news for our domestic beekeepers, who can often command a premium for their high-quality, traceable products. On average, folks in the U.S. enjoy over a pound of honey per person each year. That's a lot of morning toast, tea, and tasty recipes. So next time you reach for that jar, remember the journey, the stats, and the hardworking folks and bees behind every single golden drop. Well folks, we've been on quite the journey, haven't we? We've explored U.S. bee farming, uncovering the secrets behind millions of pounds of honey. Honey isn't just made, it's crafted through a partnership between bees and farmers. These tiny wonders are the unsung heroes of our agricultural system. It's a story of nature's brilliance and human ingenuity. The future of this industry is buzzing with potential. Technology and nature actively collaborate, ensuring the sweet business of bee farming thrives. So, after hearing all about this amazing world, you might be wondering, what can do? Well, let me tell you, you have a bigger role to play than you might think. Support local beekeepers by buying their honey. Plant pollinator-friendly flowers in your garden, avoid pesticides, use natural pest control, share the importance of bees with others. Every little bit helps create a more bee-friendly world. Thanks for buzzing along with us.